Given some of the recent rants that I've made against environmental organizations and their fanatical opposition to the Starship, it may come as a surprise to some of you that back in the 1990s, I was a card-carrying member of the Sierra Club for several years, actually, and a big believer in what they were trying to accomplish. While I was at a festival in Boulder, somebody showed me pictures like this evidence of clear cuts. On one side of the clear cut was a healthy and thriving forest protected by the National Forest Service, and on the other side, utter devastation. This was something that absolutely had to be stopped, and I was completely behind the whole concept. All of the political rhetoric about spotted owls and everything that happened in the early 1990s, well, let me tell you, I was very much on the side of the spotted owls. However, recently, environmental groups have decided to take up arms against private spaceflight. Why? Well, here's the way I see it. Recently, we've seen image after image, film after film of incredibly wealthy people going on 10-minute suborbital flights for millions of dollars without any real regard as to what sort of impact they might be having on the environment or indeed on society in general. They're just out to have a good time regardless of how much it might cost and without really thinking about where they're resources might be better spent, and this is a target. The Sierra Club and organizations like them look at images like this and say, we can capitalize on this, even though they know damn well that New Shepard runs off of hydrogen and oxygen and produces nothing more than water vapor, which is very similar to what hydrogen cells create, green energy that the Sierra Club supports. So really, New Shepard is not contributing to any damage to the environment whatsoever, but it's the whole concept of billionaires in space spending resources that could be used for the protection of the planet instead on space tourism. And so these organizations are targeting this particular industry without any regard to the long-term benefits that this could bring to the planet. And the benefits, as I have discussed many times in the past, are colossal. Because the so-called sustainable green energy solutions that organizations like the Sierra Club support so wholeheartedly create as many environmental problems as they solve, particularly in regards to mining. You require a great deal of rare materials in order to make batteries for electric vehicles, for example, and this is going up and up all the time in terms of the amount of materials required, and the damage wrought on the environment by all of this wholesale mining is colossal, and it's not just the damage to the environment, it's the damage to the people who are actually doing the mining, cobalt being the biggest problem. 70% of the world's cobalt comes from the Congo, and the reason this is such a problem is because of the human exploitation happening there. Not only do the miners not realize any of the benefits of what they're mining, children are often involved in the mining process, and not only are they put to work in unsafe and backbreaking conditions, very often they die trying to support their families. This is not sustainable green energy. This is not the long-term solution for the planet. What is the solution? Finding resources not on Earth. Finding resources that don't have to be mined anywhere on this planet, where they're not going to create any environmental damage, where child labor need not be used. And these resources are in space, especially on the moon. The moon has cobalt. The moon has nickel. The moon has all sorts of rare metals, which are invaluable to the construction of solar cells, to the construction of batteries for electric vehicles. Everything we need is out in space, but we're not 
going to be able to access it without powerful rockets like Starship. Now look, I'm not blind to the fact that the Starship launch pad is located uncomfortably close to protected areas with endangered species, and this is something that needs to be taken under serious consideration, but it would be very nice if environmental organizations were able to present an alternative as opposed to just being obstructionist about all of this. And yes, I understand that any sort of anomalies on the launch pad are going to create substantial debris fields that are going to impact these protected areas. These are massive pieces of stainless steel scrap that were spread all over the place, hundreds of meters from the launch pad after the airburst of SN11. So yeah, I'm not saying that the Sierra Club and other organizations don't have a point about Boca Chica and the potential problems that it could create for protected areas, but so could all of the industry that exists in this area and all of the hotels and all of the environment and habitat that's been destroyed by human activities in general. Why single out space flight? Because it's easy to do it, right? It's easy to attack billionaires as opposed to local communities who will get up in arms if you try to stop the way that they're making a living for themselves. So instead, let's encourage real green energy. Let's encourage mining that isn't going to be destructive to the local environment and take advantage of child labor and what essentially amounts to slave labor in underdeveloped countries. Let us instead lobby for something better. These environmental groups should help Starship. They should be helping our expansion into the solar system because that's where real green energy is and that's where the salvation of this planet's environment can be found. So until that actually happens, stay angry about space!